Welcome to Insights. I'm Eric. Thanks for tuning in today. Um, the intro music was uh, Billy's Got a Gun. Uh, that's uh, by Def Leppard. It's an interesting song that reminds me of the Invisible Hand. If you ever listen to that song and uh, study the lyrics, you can see that the unpredictability of the Invisible Hand, unless you know what it's about, ready to do. It certainly reminds me of what's taking place probably in the soybean market and the grains market. We're going to talk about soybeans specifically here because it's the leader in the energy bill. And with the USD report, USDA report coming up on uh, Thursday, of which I know nothing about, and I suspect the market's going to jump around like it's uh, like a hot potato. But in in general, the setup within the market, the way the invisible hand, I'm, I'm my guessing is is after the immediate reaction. The market is already set up if we uh, and we need to try and figure out how that is. Uh, soybeans itself is out of triple alignment and it's out of alignment. There's nothing in the name column. You can see that because we're down here. We've been down for six days. We're still de still dealing with a pretty sizable uh, weekly uh, price and time extension at 2.4 and 2.7. And that's the real problem. This market wants to reset, uh, but there's... Uh, there's a reluctant to do that. It's kind of going quiet. It's also within a seasonally weak period. And I'll highlight that we're in August. Say, well, let's highlight August and September. You can see soybeans is right here. And that's it, it does very poorly historically during this, this time frame. It's and really soybeans reluctance to do bad or to actually generate more of an organized down uh, impulse that would uh, deepen the correction suggests that there's something that's uh, some un invisible force, uh, maybe the invisible hand that's holding things up. And let's, we're going to have to talk about that. So we are in a correction. There's nothing here. The primary trend has been up for 12 months and a 45 percent. It's the leadership has now been taken over by corn. And, and I've said before that well, a couple of weeks ago that wheat was going to catch up and wheat is just doing that. It's it's closed the distance quite considerably. It used to be way behind. Now it's only about halfway behind the others. It could even take over the lead as far as we're concerned, um, other than the fact that the weekly itself is uh, extended too. But we're talking about soybeans, and I guess the conversation about soybeans can't really happen unless we know what the invisible hand is doing. If we study the energy columns of WA, DI, and DI2, and we look specifically at soybeans, they're 362 and 25. Well, those are, if, if you're familiar with DI readings, and or unless you're new to the matrix, those are pretty high, those are pretty bullish numbers. This is actually a low number, which suggests nobody's playing. So if you click this link here, you're going to pull up a chart that's going to look like these over here. And we're going to come to the first one, which is the DI. And we can see that DI is 62 and DI2 is 25. Uh, the, the computer calls this a bullish setup. It calls it a bullish energy build. And we also know that WA is right here. And the computer says this is low participation, which means nobody is interested. And this is not a classic indication of a market that's ready to start another downward impulse. This is a uh, this is more like a sell-off within an uptrend, a market that's going more quiet and becoming the, the majority is becoming disinterested in. But they're doing so as the invisible hand is accumulating. Now, this accumulation can go quite high. So even though this looks impressive, it can go even more. So this either suggests that the downside could be uh, uh, more from here to, to send because usually price drops and DI rises, or it could sideways chop for a while longer within the seasonally weak period. And in in the process of doing that, that cost building phase, a, a phase that really doesn't go down and dip into the weekly trend or reset the weekly cycles, and we could see these numbers that continue to move higher in that sideways grind. I can see it within the discussion on the internet or the discussion within social media uh, that people are getting frustrated by the lack of movement. There's no downside break. There's no upside break. And they're, and it's doing it against the cyclicality or the seasonal tendencies. So it's really getting people frustrated. And that that is, it, it's common for a market that's showing something unusual. And I think that unusual is, is the energy build during the seasonally weak period. The invisible hand is quietly accumulating. It's not doing it as much so that it's generating a massive price response, but it is 
it's 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 really keeping uh, soybeans in a tight range. Probably, I would say, not too distant future, we're going to see a um, a sigma reading, which is the computer's measurement of it, the overall volatility within the three time frames. It will likely show high compression at some point as this continues. The longer a market goes out and gets dragged through a tube of toothpaste or it, it compresses, uh, and then if you push that tube of toothpaste really hard on the end, it it sh shoots it out or shoots the substrate out uh, quite violently on the other. I suspect that's what we're setting up within soybeans. The tip off here is the energy bill, which means that it's it's got a, a, a bullish bias. Does that mean that we're going to take off after the USDA report? Um, I mean, I, I think there's so much emotion tied within that and so many people short term trading around it. I think you're due to some type of volatile response anyways. But I think once the dust settles, it's going to align with what the invisible hand is doing. So I, I wouldn't take a large position one way or another ahead of that because it, you're you're at risk to the short-term traders. Uh, but if, if if the energy build was extremely high, um, like 100 and DI2 was way up here, there wouldn't be as much room to to accumulate even more. You couldn't. It would be at maximum capacity already, which means that the downside would be limited. This is favorable. It's just that there, it could get even more favorable, which means that the short-term panic could actually be a sell-off. But it actually could be a, a, a quite substantial rally too, because the energy build is concentrated. It's surprisingly concentrated ahead of the data, which likely says that the invisible hand could be looking past uh, things like this year's crop and to next year and. Things that I've said before where there could be problems with shipping and problems with uh, country negotiations and relations. I mean, this, this, it goes a lot deeper than what, what the, how much rain uh, it's, it's going to fall in, you know, the soybean producing states. So I, I'm, I know that doesn't often get a favorable reception, but that is it, to, to try and interpret everything based in the moment on one set of variables in a complex um, uh, setup and, and complex trend. You usually end up looking bad, but it it, it is what most people uh, it's what they do. I mean, they, we all can't resist trying to do play by play for markets, and I see that's really the case that's going on this week. In terms of what would I be doing with soybeans, I would be enjoying my position in the primary trend, and because of the weekly is extended, there will be no entry until. Either this resets or, or or this flips up, and even if this flips up, it's probably going to be mid cycle, which will push things. So I'd love to see a sell off that would reset the weekly, and I think anything that would do that and push DI up higher than where we are would be extremely bullish. So I think that's what I would wait for, and probably I think everyone is a uh, short term trading nowadays. So I think everyone's probably leveraged up to the eyeballs before this thing moves. But I think the pros play is to step aside and let everyone duke it out. And, and, and the idea is to be the last man standing. The last man standing is the one that follows the direction of the primary trend, which is up. The cycle is not really extended. The price cycle in soybeans is zero, which means it's really close to its mean. So this thing could have a lot longer to go. Uh, and if it goes, a lot longer, maybe another six to 12 months in addition to where we are already, there's a lot more profits to be made if you can continue to hold that core position. So in terms of what the government says about the crop and the crop yield, and I'm not even sure what they'll report, I'm sure others out there listening to this are more qualified to make comments on that, uh, but uh, the, the invisible hand, in my opinion, or at least from what my experience of following the matrix is already looking past that. And what it's looking past for is probably 2022. And as long as this numbers or these numbers continue to rise, it's not going to be a favorable outcome. I think the pain is coming in terms of the grocery store and social order and all those things that are associated with food and food inflation and shortages. And I'm not even sure this is the demand thing. I think this is a shortage thing caused by lockdowns and breakdowns of the global supply chain. So other than that, I'm not really sure how the USDA report is anything more useful than uh, something that everybody's going to really talk about and uh, send 20 tweets a second afterwards proclaiming that they saw, uh, you know, whatever numbers that they were being 
that are being reported. I don't even have enough experience. I have enough experience with the government agencies and, and economic data sets. And trust me, I've been doing that for 20 some years or more. Um, I, I know what these with these segments of the government do, and I know how unreliable they are. I can't imagine that that arm of the government is any better at long-term data sets than, say, the, you know, the BEA, uh, the Bureau of Economic uh, Analysis, or was that the BEA, BEA or the BLS? I mean, there's a lot of agencies out there. Plus, there's uh, so many databases that I uh, upload into the computer that we study longer term. Uh, I, I know what massaging they do and how often they get it wrong and how often they revise these data sets when nobody's looking. Whether or not the USDA does this, I have no idea. I suspect they they might as well. But either way, uh, what, regardless of the data, I think uh, we have to keep an eye on energy. And I think soybeans is still continuing to lead the complex. If the weekly ever resets, this thing is going to be quite powerful. So if you have any questions about soybeans or the grain complex in general, let me know. Contact me back at the blog or contact me directly uh, any, any way you'd like to do that. I'm going to keep, re, keep this review restricted. Um, we only have a few more days before I assume the grain complex is just going to go berserk, at least for a day or two, just like they do with gold. Everybody goes berserk within a day or two, and then and everybody walks away in disgust and you know vows that they're never going to touch gold again. And then what you see is that the invisible hand just bought the decline and DI spiked. And, and then you try and tell everybody that they should step in and buy and nobody cares because they hate gold. And I would assume that the grain market is going to do. Uh, there's no difference. It's still humans that trade these things and humans are. Uh, they're not very disciplined and they're way too emotional when they do this stuff. So. Find out what the invisible hand is doing, follow it. Remember, it's unpredictable unless you use the matrix. Otherwise, you're going to have Billy stalking you with a gun, and that's usually that's not a comforting thought. If you read the lyrics from that Def Leppard song, it's, uh, it's, it's actually one of their better songs before they kind of uh, slid down the hill in terms of their quality of the material. But it's, uh, it does remind me of the invisible hand in trading. So listen up, to, watch the video if you can, and, and, and read the lyrics. So enjoy the rest of your trading day, and don't get too wrapped up in any government report.